everyone, it's Kelly Longton from Kelly Longton Law. And today I wanna to talk to you about divorce and what happens and the steps you need to take with estate planning. Now, if you've recently divorced your spouse and the judge has signed the divorce degree, you might be thinking, now, now what? What's the next step? And although you may feel as though you've spent enough time and money on lawyers, there's one last attorney that you need to talk to and that's an estate planning attorney. If you and your former spouse had an estate plan done together previously, it's necessary for you to come in and make changes to avoid having all of your hard-earned money and property be distributed in a way that you did not intend when you passed away. And if you've not done any planning, now is the perfect time to get your affairs in order. Now, when you meet with your estate planning attorney, it's crucial that you bring all of the necessary documents, including a copy of your divorce decree. The document will be helpful in determining what obligations need to be provided for in your documents, what accounts or property you now own, and how you own those accounts and property. So oftentimes in the divorce decree, there'll be specific requirements or considerations that need to be attended to regarding support obligations and regarding your property division. Now, spousal and child support obligations may require you purchasing life insurance should you pass away before fulfilling the entire obligation. And if there's a child support obligation, it might be wise to have the life insurance policy owned by a trust allowing distributions to the minor children by a trustee instead of a lump sum payout to your former spouse who may or may not use those funds as intended. And if this isn't incorporated into your decree, you wanna make sure that your former spouse agrees with this strategy. Now, the divorce decree will also contain a section on the division of your marital property. And this is helpful information to provide to your estate planning attorney to, to present an accurate picture of your current property and your financial accounts. And in addition to identifying the accounts or property that you now own and how you own them is incredibly important. Ownership of accounts or property previously owned by you and your former spouse as joint tenants or tenants by the entirety has more likely changed to ownership as tenants in common under the state law. And this is important because before your divorce, if you had passed away, your now former spouse would have likely received your interest in the account or property automatically. However, now that the ownership has changed to tenants in common when you pass away, your interest will go to your heirs. And if you don't do any planning, the interest will be transferred according to state law, which may not coincide with your wishes. And as part of your estate planning, you can choose who will receive your interest and how they will receive it. So whether you have a will or a trust or some other estate planning documents as a durable power of attorney or a medical power of attorney, it's important for you to understand how your divorce decree affects your existing estate plan. So let's talk about what effects your recent divorce may have on these documents and your estate plan. If you have a last will and testament, depending upon the state in which you live, divorce can have a varying impact on your will. In some states, a divorce revokes all provisions in your will that benefit your former spouse. Additionally, some state laws also revoke the appointment of your former spouse as your personal representative, the person in charge of settling your estate. However, in other states, a divorce revokes the entire will. Should you die before executing a new will, the law will determine who receives your money and your property, even if the gifts to your former spouse are revoked. The law may or may not revoke the gifts that you made to your former spouse's family, making it very important to revise this document as soon as possible to incorporate any changes that you may wish to make. Now, similar to the wills, the laws regarding what happens to a provision and a revocable living trust vary as well. Some state laws revoke all provisions relating to the former spouse, while others leave the trust intact. If you and your former spouse previously had joint planning, it's important to review it and make any desired changes as like wills and gifts to your former spouse's family, as the beneficiaries or a trust may or may not be revoked as a result of the divorce. 
And in some states, filing for divorce revokes the former spouse's appointment as agent, the person who would act on your behalf under a financial power of attorney. However, in other st states, a divorce does not revoke your spouse's ability to act as your agent. Regardless, if there are uh, any outstanding powers of attorneys with third parties, it's important for you to inform them of your divorce and provide them with the revocation so they are on notice that your former spouse is no longer authorized to act on your behalf. Like other estate planning documents, state law vary as to whether or not your former spouse will still be able to make medical decisions for you if you're unable to make them or communicate them yourself. Now, some states will revoke the designation of your former spouse as your agent for medical matters as a result of the, the divorce, while others do not. Regardless, it's incredibly important to keep this document up to date and to provide it to the necessary healthcare professionals. Because a life insurance policy is a contract with a third party, a divorce can sometimes complicate things. If, you're, if you've named your former spouse as a beneficiary of the policy prior to your divorce, state law varies as to whether that designation is automatically revoked. Even if the designation is revoked under state law, it is important to change the beneficiary designation so the company is on notice of your wishes. In some cases, although the former spouse is no longer entitled to the life insurance proceeds, if they were not informed, the benefit will be paid out to the named beneficiary, which is the former spouse, and it will be the responsibility of the rightful beneficiary to sue and collect the proceeds from the former spouse. This may not be an issue in some instances, but in others, it could create a lot of avoidable drama. Now let's talk about retirement accounts. For accounts governed by the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, or ERISA, the designation is not automatically revoked. In order to ensure that your former spouse does not receive the benefits, you must affirmatively change the designation, provided that your divorce decree does not state otherwise. <clears throat> As a newly single person, you are now in full control of your money and property. Without an estate plan in place, the state laws will determine what happens to your hard-earned money and property. If you already have estate planning documents in place, you'll need to review them when circumstances change, such as in the event of a divorce. Even if gifts to your former spouse are revoked under state law, you need to make sure that the alternative plan built into your documents is still what you want. So give us a call today so we can schedule an appointment to protect your new future and those who you love. And don't forget to bring in your divorce decree.